How's it going everyone? Ben here, your friendly neighborhood transgender med student, soon to be doctor, and today we're going to be talking about hormone replacement therapy vial contamination, especially if you use E or T uh, in liquid form and you inject it. So the reason why I am making this video is because I am a victim of vial contamination and that's because of how pharmacies kind of give you your prescriptions. So usually the pharmacy will either give me my prescription in this large 10 milliliter vial, this will have enough tea for me to uh, go through four to six months or the pharmacy will give me these one milliliter vials and they will give me about eight to ten of these to last four to six months now i generally like the big vials because then i don't have to you know open up new vials and it wastes less resources it's more envi environmentally uh good <laughs> But these one milliliter vials are very handy because if I'm traveling, then I can just take one of these with me. I usually never go for more than a month when I'm traveling. But recently I discovered in my most recent 10 milliliter vial that I got is that over time, because when we inject T or E, we don't really inject a lot and we only pull maybe like 0.2 to 0.5 uh, once a week is that we're stabbing into these rubber stoppers uh, every time that we do it and over time when we're stabbing into these rubber stoppers these plastic bits from the stopper gets into the solution and that uh, there's a medical term for it it's called coring and coring is that little plastic bit that kind of falls into your solution and usually I never had a problem with it because they would be big enough for me to uh, kind of avoid uh, I would use the big uh, 16 gauge needle to draw and I use a smaller needle to inject myself but there was one instance where the plastic bit was small enough where I accidentally injected a little bit of plastic coring into my thigh and that made me freak out I was like holy moly I do not want foreign particles in my body and I'm not I'm a healthcare professional I try to uh, draw in the most medically safe way. There's ways to reduce coring, which is inject use like I said You use the bigger needle to draw shorter needle to inject and that really does protect you from these large bits, but um, Yeah, even I made a mistake because there's just so much plastic bits in it So y'all know how I am when I have a medical problem or issue that comes up to mind I do my literature search, literature search and there's actually a couple of studies that have been published about this vial contamination especially uh, nurses who have trouble with large volume lidocaine or a large volume IV medication that come in the same vials that our ENT comes from and they also deal with coring as an issue uh, just because of these rubber stoppers and um, in one study it talked about something called a needle filter or filtered needles so uh, filtered needles are needles that already have a little filter on them to prevent any form of coring possible um, I am thinking about upgrading to filtered needles once my current uh, my current a batch of needles run out just because it has the filters built in so I never have to deal with coring ever again but I already have like a ton of needles I have enough needles to last me another year and I didn't want to throw them away and the filtered needles can be kind of pricey uh, depending on your your income so uh, I looked more into what else can I do to make sure I can filter out whatever uh, testosterone I had left in that contaminated vial because I didn't want to throw that testosterone away that's money right there so I found uh, recently that you can buy something called needle filters and they kind of look like this. Um, they're the ones that I got have a filtration rating of like 0.22 microns. And that's just enough for you to filter out any coring that happens in a contaminated vial. And they're kind of large and uh, have this green covering. But you'll notice in the mid middle, there's this white like mesh like material. It really is kind of like a colander, but for medications. And you just uh, snap it on to whatever needle that you have and uh, attach your drawing needle into the filter and then attach the filter to your needle housing. Now, I will say that initially when I used it, uh, for some reason, I wasn't able to pull testosterone. I was confused. I was like, why is it not happening? Uh, is the filtration too strong? But uh, what happens is that 
because your solution is going through this large filter, you need to use a lot of suction power. So uh, off camera, I put in as much air into the uh, needle housing as much as possible, injected it into the vial, and then I was able to draw out the oil. Now, uh, I feel like if you have a more liquid-based solution, the filter would have no issue sucking out as much, uh, sucking out quickly without much suction power, but I feel like because testosterone is viscous, I had to use more suction power, but eventually I got a lot of testosterone out without any contamination. You'll see that it's crystal clear in this video, uh, but I did lose a small bit of testosterone within the filter uh, because you know the filter is pretty large but I was happy with how much I was able to pull and l if you look at the filter right now in this uh, b-roll there's so much contaminated particles that's on the filter so the filter did an excellent job of making sure none of that went through and so now I can take this whatever leftover uh, testosterone that I have and I can put it in a fresh vial or a fresh container uh, that's safe for me to put in so then I can use that use that for my next dose so I was really happy that I bought these needle filters they were less than 15 bucks and I only had to use one of these to draw out the testosterone so yeah that's how I solved the issue of making sure I can still use my uh, testosterone HRT that had little bits of rubber stopper particles in them coring that's what it's called medically and I just used a little cheap needle filter uh, and it did the job I will say that uh, this issue has only happened with the larger volume vials. The little one milliliter vials that I've used over time, I've, I've been t on testosterone for almost five years and it's never caused an issue. It's just that these large ones, because I'm stabbing so often into them, even if I practice good um, drawing techniques, it's still going to over time just break away and have some rubber particles fall in. So um, if y'all have this issue and y'all don't want to throw out your testosterone and y'all have been thinking, what can I do uh, and safely inject my testosterone that's been contaminated, uh, invest in a needle filter. I'll put the Amazon affiliate link below down to the uh, needle filters that I bought, but um, feel free to get it from any cheap resource that you can find. Anyways, I hope uh, this video has been helpful. I hope uh, you learned something from this video and I hope that you'll share this information with someone that may benefit from this information. Please follow me on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with my daily life and activism work if you are so interested and inclined. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Mwah. This is Ben.